Welcome to this SEO Library webinar and thank you for attending the Creating and Using a User Group session. The User Groups tab allows you to link user records together for circulation purposes. The User Group feature is an option that a family elects to do. It is used for circulation purposes and not as punishment. This feature can be used in public library settings to link together members of the same family. The system has been configured to allow the parents to see what their children have checked out and what bills they might have. It can also be used for a husband-wife pair who wish to check out one another's whole pay, pay bills and a setter. All members will be able to see each other's user IDs on the public catalog. And since the parent is set up to see what their children have checked out, what holds they might have placed, or bills they might have, this can easily be accessed on the public catalog. But the children of the group are configured so they cannot see this information for group members on the public catalog, but they only see the user IDs. We will look at the public catalog side after we have created a user group. The user group name identifies a specific user group responsibility policy. This name is 10 characters or less and may not include any spaces or punctuation except for a dash or underscore. SEO Library suggests using the following for naming a user group. Use the three-letter code of the user's library Use the first three letters of a user family's last name. Use the last four digits of the user family's phone number. So for example, if you are creating a user group for my family, it would be SEO, because that is who has registered me or who owns me. W-E-L, the first three letters of my last name, Welsh and the last four digits of my telephone number, 7100. So then the user group name would be SEO WEL 7100 with no spaces. If a user does not have a phone number, an address could be substituted. There are five responsibility policies for a user group. There is the parent, teacher, proxy, child, and student. So now I would like to show you how to create a user group. I already have the members registered, so you need to go to Modify User, bring up the user that you would like to add to the user group. In this case, we are first going to add Kiki Welsh, who is the parent, So I type her in and search. So there's Kiki. Click on Modify User. Click on the User Groups tab. And you can see that it defaults to child. None of the access levels are checkmarked. But we want to use the user gadget. I'm sorry, I want to use, first change her to a parent. So we use the drop down, click on parent. Then we are going to have to build the user group since it has not been created yet. So remember the first three letters of your library, it's SEO. You ask her last name, her last name is Welsh. So we type in W E L. And then the last three dig four digits of her telephone number, 7100. So you click on Save. And since we want to discuss the access levels, we're going to go click on Make More Changes. So the access level controls a group's member's access to other group members' records, such as checkouts, holds, or bills. Display charges. This option allows the user to see checkouts that belong to other members of the group. 
Display Holds. This option allows the user to see holds that belong to other members of the group. Checkout Holds. This option allows the user to check out items on hold for other members of the group. When the item is checked out to a user that has this access, the hold record is considered filled. And I will demonstrate this later, but this is very handy. If you create, say, a husband-wife pair, and they would like to be able to check out each other's holds, that it will remove or consider the hold filled for the person that you are checking out those holds for. Remove holds allows a member of group to remove holds for other members. Display bills. This op option allows the user to see bills that belong to other members of the group. Pay bills. This allows the user to pay bills for other members of the group. Notice master. This flag determines if all notices for the group are sent to this user. There can only be one notice master per group. If you check the notice master field for a user and there is already a designated notice master in the group, a message will display indicating that the notice master flag for the previous user has been cleared. So if a parent wants to receive all the notifications, courtesy, hold, and overdue notices for the group, then the Notice Master box needs to be checkmarked. And as was stated before, only one can be the Notice Master within a group. If nobody is checked as the Notice Master, then everyone receives their own notices. And as you can see, the Notice Master is defaulted as unchecked. So if you are registering a parent and they decide that they want to be the Notice Master, then you would checkmark this. And she, the parent, would, he or she, would receive all the notices. Allow group choice. This option controls whether a prompt displays in the checkout, placehold, or bill user wizards to determine if the transaction is for the group or individual. This group choice pertains to only workflows and not the public catalog, so it is defaulted as unchecked. And it is very important to remember that if any of the top six boxes are checked, it will alter what is seen on the public catalog for these policies. SER recommends leaving the defaults as is. So you can see a parent has these first six boxes checked, and only the parent, teacher, and proxy policies are set up to pay group bills on the public catalog with these defaults. Okay, and now I would like to add a couple other users to this SEO WL7100 user group. So I am going to close. And Kiki has two sons that she would like to add to this group. Her first one is Buddy. So we are going to bring up Buddy under Modify User. We found Buddy. If we go to User Groups, you can see it defaults to child. He is Kiki's child. So we want to you can see the child does not have any of these items checkmarked. So we are going to try to locate the group that Kiki belongs to. So we know that he is registered as SEL. He t you already know his last name is Welsh. So W-E-L is the first three letters of his last name. Search. To see that we have two groups, one's 7100, one's 7200. And he's five years old, and he cannot remember his telephone number. So let's look under SEO, WL 7200, and show group membership. And you can see 
that there are four different people in this group, but you're not sure who his, his mother is. But so you ask him if any of these people are part of his family, and he says no. So let's look at the other group. We show group membership in this one. And, and indeed, it is, it is his mother, who is Kiki. So we want to choose this one. We click OK and save. It brings up a box which says add user to existing user group. Click yes. Let's modify another user because she has two sons. And the other user is Bear Welsh. So we search for Bear Welsh. And since we already know the name of the user group, then we are just going to go ahead and type it in. So S-E-L, S-E-O-W-E-L, 7100. And we save. And click Yes to add user to existing user group. Okay, and members of the group do not need to know or remember the name of their user group. Staff can use the Browse User Group option to look up a user group within the User Search Helper and Checkout. So if we go to Checkout and we click on the User Search Helper, you can bullet the Browse User Group and Buddy comes in and he says, I belong to my user group, and I just don't know the, remember the name of it. And you don't have to either. So you know that he belongs to SEO, first three letters of his last name. And then we can search for this user group. You can see there are two of them. We can display this user group, and you can see that Buddy is a part of the 7100 group. Click on his username and check out the user. So that is how simple it is to locate a user group and a user within it. So if your library decides to use the user group feature, you may find it beneficial to place a color dot on the card of the user group members. This will alert the staff that they are part of a user group. So also see where if Buddy came in, he went to hand you his card, and you said, oh, I am part of a user group. It defines that he is part of a user group. And maybe Kiki, the mother, said, pick up my books that, that are on hold for me. So after you see he is part of that user group, let me show you how easy that was. We go to display user, browse user group, and we type in SEO, W-E-L, and we already know it's 7100, but we could actually search for that. It brings up all the members of that group. So Kiki has asked Buddy to check out items for her. Well, you could just click on check out to user for Kiki, then, and then she could check out Kiki's items that are on hold. So I'd like to demonstrate also the proxy user and how it removes holds that are being held for someone else. So I've already created, and I will demonstrate and show you that user group. I've already created a user group of two people of proxy, which would be similar to a husband-wife. And it is S-E-L-B-O-N. And since I don't know the last four digits of the telephone number, or this person does not remember, brings it up, we have Boo Boo Bond and Frenchie. Well, Frenchie is the wife, and she is coming in, and they've already received a hold notification or alerting them that items 
are being held for Boo Boo. So let's go ahead and check out to user Frenchie. And before we do that, let's go to display user and show how if we have Frenchie up, you can display the user group holds. So you can see this is highlighted and the two titles that are being held for Boo Boo. Okay, so if we go back to checkout, we have Frenchie up, and we are going to check out the two items that you have on the hold shelf for Boo Boo. Automatically checks it out, just as if they are Frenchie's items because since they belong to the same group, it just automatically check those, checks those out. So I want to show you under display user, Boo Boo Bonds, holds, and you can see that these will be gone. So I think that is very, very handy. So you can see it has no, no holds. So they just automatically remove those, and you don't have to even worry about the button where it says this is being held for such and such, you know, what to override and keep the hold and not keep the hold. So, so I think that's very handy for, for a husband-wife group or for a children, a child, for the parent to be able to check those out. Okay, well, now, Bear Welsh has become of age, and he's getting ready to leave for college. And he no longer wants to be part of this group anymore. So he asked to be removed from the user group, F-E-O-W-E-L 7100. So you can go ahead and go to Modify User. To bring up the user, which is Bear Welsh. And click on Modify User. Go to User Groups. And you can see there's a little helper up here that says Remove Group Membership. We click on that. You can see it lists all three members that we, we created to be in this user group. We have Kiki the parent, Buddy, and Bear. You can click on Select All, and you can automatically remove this group. Once the group name of the last member has been changed, the system will automatically delete the old group name. But we just want to use, remove Bear right now. So if we click OK and Save and Close, let's go into Checkout. And let's bring up, by browsing that user group, let's go ahead and bring that group up. We already know it's SEO, W-E-L, and we know it was 7100. You can see that Bear has been removed. Okay, and I would like to pause for just a few minutes and allow for any questions. And then next, I would like to show what this looks like on Enterprise and eLibrary. So I will pause for just a few minutes and allow you to ask any questions. So if you will please chat any questions, enter them into the chat box. Okay, we do have one question. It says, could you show me where the remove button is for what? for the remove user group. Okay, if we are in modify user, and let's go ahead and bring up Buddy Welsh, and we'll go ahead and show you how to remove him. So you have to be in modify user. 
and we click on Buddy Welsh. You have to highlight or click on, I mean, the user groups tab. When you click on it, there is a little helper up here that says remove group membership. So when you click on it, and if by chance this is not showing when you click on the user groups and modify user, please let us know and, and we will turn that on for your library, but it should be already be turned on. To click on remove group membership, you can see Buddy is highlighted. Then you just click OK. And remember to save it. And Buddy is removed. So then if we could go to checkout, and let's go ahead and bring up Kiki, the parent. And check out to user. Then if we just modify this user on Kiki and look at her user groups, it shows her link to this. And we show group membership. You can see that Kiki is the only one left in that group. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, if not, we will go to Enterprise and also eLibrary and show you what it looks like there. Show you on Enterprise first. And I am going to use my patron record because I already have a user group established and it also has items checked out and bills and everything. It's kind of hard to demonstrate that a little bit when you just create a group. So this is an older group. So if I go to login and I log in using my credentials, Okay, and you can remember you're always logged in when you see welcome and your name. I want to click on my account. Remember, it always takes just a little bit to bring up my account. Okay. As you can see, it looks very similar to what it looks like if you were just looking at a person who does not belong to a group. So if I click on the tab checkouts, you can see it shows all of my checkouts. But at the bottom, you see groups current checkouts. So then you can see that Isabella, which is a child, has one item checked out, and it's actually overdue. So you could renew that item just by clicking on here to renew or here to select all she had more than more than one item to renew if you go to holds tab you can see all of my holds then you can click at the bottom on the group holds you can see that the other daughter Gigi has some holds that are pending. You can choose to cancel. Say if you see a title that you didn't think was very appropriate for Gigi or she no longer needs that title and she has forgotten to cancel it, you could easily cancel each of the holds or all of the holds at one time. You could edit, edit the pickup location and say if you are going on vacation, you could suspend all the holds for your family and then cancel those when you've come back off of vacation. And the fines, you can see that I just owe a penny, but if we look at the group fines, you can see that Isabella has some fines and she also has a lost material. So then on Enterprise, you can use PayPal to pay 
for your families all of their items. Okay, and we'd like to go ahead and log out and demonstrate to you what this looks like on eLibrary. So I am going to log in using the same credentials as I did. Okay, you can see where it says Welcome Mar Marcy Welsh. And if I go to my account and review my account, And on eLibrary, actually, under the account summary, it shows the whole group's money that is owed. And if you look on the checkouts, you can see that it automatically displays everyone's checkouts. You can renew all of these right from the screen by selecting all or just an individual item. You could do it for yourself. You can do it for your child. You can click on request. Request or messages. Holds. You can easily select to renew the holds. Or you can select to suspend any of these holds. Then same thing with the bills. Shows Isabella's lost items. So then you can choose to pay these bills. Okay, and 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 on eLibrary, PayPal is not available. So it is just on Enterprise. And one thing I forgot to show you back on Enterprise, so we're gonna log in again is where it shows each person's user ID. And click on my account. It always takes just a little bit to bring up your account. Okay, I've got to show you this, these group members. It shows what role each of the people is within your group. So there you have yourself or myself as the parent, then each of your children. So you can see that Kyle's in good shape. He doesn't have any message. Gigi has no message. But Isabella is blocked, and I showed you that on her finds. And my account needs attention because I have an item overdue. So a parent never needs to log in or needs to know the user ID or PIN to be able to access their children's checkouts or their fines and also can pay those from here. So are there any other questions? If you do have a question, would you please type it in the chat box? Okay, I see there are no more questions, but one thing I do want to add that PayPal is available and shows on eLibrary. It's just that we don't see it because we actually don't have PayPal, but it does show an enterprise for us. But for several libraries that do use PayPal, then it would show an eLibrary and you would be able to use it to pay your children's bills, your husband or wife's bills, and just remember that only proxy, teacher, and parent are set up to see what items are checked out, what holds, and what bills a user has within the group. So I would like to thank you very much for attending the user group. I'd like to show you the, the various emails and also the URLs that, that are available. So the support at servingneverohighone.org is where you can create tickets. The seolibrary.eventbrite.com is where you can view what webinars are being shown. 
and YouTube are where some of these webinars have been uploaded to YouTube, and eventually this one will be available. So I thank you very much for attending, and goodbye.